Go on. So, in my experience over a long time working with people, the one constant when you work with people who want to be better in their life is their ability or inability to concentrate on something that matters to them, be it a task, a skill, a goal, whatever. So today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a simple model that helps you to focus more on what you want to achieve in your life. In the short term, in small things, like for instance, what the exercise that we just did there, through to bigger things, long-term goals and so on. This ability to control what you're focusing on is probably the most important thing you can do. Most people get distracted. They call the 21st century the age of distraction. For good reason. Phones are going off all the time. People are watching Twitter. They're, things are happening at such a constant and, and fast rate that attention spans are getting shorter. Now, what is good focus? Can anyone tell me? Can someone give me a good definition of what focus means? In simple terms, it's the ability to concentrate your attention on something to the exclusion of all else. The ability to focus your energy on something without being too distracted, enough that it would move you off that particular task or thing you were focusing on. How many people here when they're reading a book, read a bit and then they have to go back and read again because they've lost track of where they're at? This is a good example of concentration. And yet, people who read a lot don't have that problem as much because they've practiced learning how to read sentence after sentence after sentence after sentence. And usually what they do is they have their own mental breaks even without realizing it. They might set themselves a goal of reading a page and then just having a little mental break. Now, someone who reads well will have, be able to read the page and then they want to ask questions about what they learned from the page rather than just reading all these words on a page and moving to the next page. How many of you read, when you read something, you really don't feel like or think that you got anything from, the, from reading it? You get that? Just put a hand up. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty normal, isn't it? One of the good strategies there is to be able to read something and only read as much as you feel like you can manage. So what we're doing here is called chunking down. We're taking it to what is something large and just making it a little bit smaller. And it's the same for concentration. We can, by narrowing our focus, we can eliminate a lot of what's going on around us. Now, I can't point a term called focal blindness. When you're focusing properly in, in, in this context in golf, it's almost like you become blind. It's actually interesting. You almost can't hear anything and can't see anything because what's actually happening is you're operating internally. You've got to focus on something going on and it's all internal. You, you're playing out this scene in your mind of the way you want it to happen. And whatever's happening in the external world, you, you don't really pick up on. Has anyone here ever been in a, in a situation where you're sitting in a chair or sitting somewhere and you're lost in space? Your mind's gone off somewhere? and you, you don't even realise where you are. Your, your thoughts are taking you away somewhere. Have you all had that experience? Or how about you've been in a car and you're travelling from one place to another and you don't even remember how you got there. Have you ever had that experience? You've just driven the car or you're sitting in the car and you, you're off with the fairies and the pixies and before you know it, the car stops and you're there. And time was not a factor. And so today, what we want to talk about is a really simple model that was developed by uh, Dr. Robert Nedefa, who's, who's a very famous sports psychologist. It's a simple model, and we're just adapting some of it today to golf for us, so that we've got an idea of a, a way of going about getting into a, an ideal focal, focal state, into a state where we can narrow our focus down and get the job done without being distracted. Now we've seen on television in PGA tournaments, particularly, also on PGA tournaments, particularly when you see PGA tournaments where you might see someone like Tiger go in to hit a golf shot and a click goes off and he comes straight out of his routine, he might glare at the person and then he walks away and goes back through his routine again. Now Tiger is, is a master of this ability to concentrate to the exclusion of all else. In fact, it's fair to say that anybody that gets to a 
a really high standard in golf in this context has this ability to do this. All right? Have you ever wondered how uh, when you see a, a major tournament and the professional standing on the tee, so his caddy beside him, and maybe they're leading the tournament, and, and you'll see a, a shot from the camera behind the tee, and there are literally thousands of people lining the fairway, and they're, they're right on the edge of the fairway, and it just looks like this corridor of people with this narrow corridor. Could you imagine what it would be like to stand up there with a driver, first tee, ready to hit your shot, and all you can see is a sea of faces and people sticking their head out the side, narrowing the fairway. So all the way up the fairway, all you see is a lot of people. Could you imagine what that would be like? Would that be a little bit nerve-wracking, do you think? A bit scary? What do you think? Scary. Yeah, I mean, imagine that. Standing there, lots of people. What do you do in that situation? Well, here's what you don't do. What you don't do is you don't think about the people. You think, well, that's, that's crazy. How can you not think about all the people there? But that's precisely what you need to learn to do because if you were standing there thinking about the people, well, guess where your golf ball is probably going to go? It's going to go into the people. As scary as that sounds. Now, pros do hit poor shots even when they concentrate well, but it's not their intention, it's not something they're trying to do. Unless possibly they're inexperienced, they haven't been in that situation before and they're really, you know, kind of stressed out about it. Great champions, because they're used to it, they realise that it's, it's not a problem for them. Because the reason it's not a problem is they're not thinking about people. What are they thinking about? Yeah, they're, actually they're thinking about precisely how they want the ball to behave in terms of its flight, uh, the shape of the flight and so on, all the characteristics of flight, and also where they want the golf ball to land. So if they get really good at that, then they're not going to be worried about people there. And that's what I mean about focal blindness. They get so good at concentrating that they don't see the people. As weird as that seems, they don't see any of that. In fact, they don't even hear the people. It's quite an amazing system. So let's talk a little bit about what that is. You've got a model in front of you. And the model starts with, if you look at the outside of this, there are four boxes there. And the boxes have one, two, three, and four in them. And around the outside of the box, you have broad to narrow, and you have external to internal. Okay, so here's the box. External at the top, internal at the bottom, broad over here, narrow over here. One, two, three, and four. Okay? Now, what does this all mean? Well, it's simply this. Let's talk about it in simple terms. There are things that are going on out there right now, outside of what's happening in here. Okay, number one. Two, there are things that go on inside your head. So, for instance, when we did that exercise of just counting down the clock, we're looking at this thing in the outside, but we pick up things as we go along. So external noises can be picked up, but also what happens is we can get little voices in our heads internally saying things. How many people here when they struggling a little bit on the golf course, have the internal dialogue going. Who, who has that here? Yes. Not everyone has it. How many people, when they're struggling with the golf game, have feel issues? They become aware that their body doesn't feel right. Put your hand up if you're one of those people. Okay, put your hand up if you're one of the people that has visual images of places you don't want your golf ball to go. It's not happening on the outside because you haven't hit the ball yet, but how many of you actually fear the ball going left or right and you actually picture that stuff? See, it's, what's interesting here is we're processing information internally lots of different ways. Some people definitely feel like, uh, some people for instance feel tight in their body when they start off and some people when they're not playing well feel tight in their body even if they've stretched and even if they're warmed up and that can be a distraction for them and for other people it's definitely they stand on the tee and they see the shot they don't want to hit and that happens for some and then others get the dialogue also and you can get combinations of these things it might not be one thing it could be that you get a sequence of events where you see the bad shot, you hear something going on in your head, and then you feel a bit tight in the body. Okay? But here's what's going to happen. They're not going to all happen together. The events will happen, happen separately. Now, what we need to do is understand that we need to control the outside world a little bit more. We need to be able to take what, all this information that's out there, and we need to process that information in such a way that we can come to a place in our mind 
where we've narrowed our focus right down to the pointy end of the arrow, as we call it here in the college, right to the pointy end where we're going to execute the shot. Now, it doesn't take long. We don't need to be doing that for long. A good pre-shot routine is probably going to take 12 to 15 seconds. So from the time you stand behind the golf ball to walking in, lining up, going through your process and hitting the shot, 12 to 15 seconds. Some people take a little longer, some take a little shorter, but that time seems to be about where it's at. But the actual swing part, when I'm standing over the golf ball here, and I go back and I go through and hit my shot, that's no more than two seconds. So what happens is a lot of people think that concentration might mean that when I walk off the first tee, I've got to have my head space so connected to this pointy end for the whole round. And you might be out there for five hours, and that's not going to happen. Your attention comes in and out, and for people that are really skilled at it, it won't be longer than a handful of seconds. Like, it won't be five seconds. Most people do not concentrate for longer than five consecutive seconds. Does that seem strange? Would you have imagined that concentration is actually longer periods? People come out of concentration. Now, people who practice meditation every day, or let's say experts that have been doing it for years, I think I read somewhere where the average amount that people concentrate for without distractions is up to six seconds, and that people that master it, it's about 12 seconds. So it's kind of double what the average is. But it's not a lot, is it? 12 seconds. So just imagine you're counting that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, done. Most people, something's happened. Bird flying, etc. We don't need that for golf. We need no more than a few seconds. So let's look at it. Let's talk about it. Okay. First one, I'm standing behind the ball. I'm looking down the fairway. First uh, part of this program, the first quadrant, that we're looking at is it's a broad target we're looking at. We're looking down the fairway and we can see a lot of things. So it's external, it's outside. That's the first thing about it. Okay? And our level of focus is broad. It's not narrow yet. Now as we scan, and that's what we're calling this, we're scanning the environment, we're looking at the shape of the hole and we're looking at where the bunkers are and, and then we're starting to narrow down. Okay? But we're basically looking at that first section of something that's very large okay, and identifying what the shape of the hole looks like. Maybe we haven't played the course before. The second quadrant, we're standing here, let's say we've got our clubs with us, now we're starting to think about the type of shot that we're hitting. So if you look at it on, the, on, the, on here, you see that we go scan number one, the second one says select. Now select in this case means two things. Obviously club selection, but also shot selection. You've got to now start to imagine what kind of golf shot would best suit this particular hole. It could be a par three and so on. Now, consider this, you're doing this already. You're doing this already. You do this, you might have your own way of doing it, but this is essentially what you do. You do a scan, and then you start to think about selection. Now, it's from here, when we go from quadrant two to quadrant three, that problems can happen. Now, problems happen in the sense that when we get to quadrant three, narrow and internal, people don't always get the simulation right. Now, that's what we call it here, simulate. It simply means this. Inside our brain, we've got to be very clear about what we want to do with the golf shot. Very clear. Now, when we go inside and we start to visualize, we're in a kind of hypnotic state or an altered state. It's not normal anymore because we're less aware of what's going on outside. This is precisely the state that I was talking about before that professionals get into. See, the second quadrant, they're standing there leaning on their bag, talking to their caddy and discussing strategy. They're discussing you know, how they're going to go about hitting the shot. Okay? What kind of shot's going to work here? So yes, they can still see people mulling around on the sides, but they're starting to get into a more narrow focus and make some decisions. Once they get into simulation, you'll see them. Some of them will stand behind the ball and they're just making little swings to get a feel for the shot they're hitting. But they're actually inside, they're not outside anymore. Again, here's where this focal blindness comes in. They're not now as aware of what's going on. 
at some level they might know that there's something there, but they're really much more in here. Now here's the key. We've got to get from quadrant three to quadrant four, meaning that we're going to go through, set up, and execute the shot, but still be in our head. Does that make sense to everyone here? So even though now we're back outside, we're looking down the fairway, we're actually looking down the fairway, but we're really inside our heads playing the shot. And this is why if we do this properly, we don't see stuff on the sides because it's not part of our concentration. Does everyone get that? Okay, so we start from a scanning perspective. From scanning, we go to selection. We start to narrow focus down. We start to pick target areas at the ideal area. We start to match club selection to the area we're going. Three, we're now going through like a rehearsal mode, what we call simulate because it's four S's, but we're simulating the motion or the stroke that's going to match that spot we want to hit the golf ball to, right? We've identified the old tree up on the right or whatever it happens to be, and we want to get it there. Now, when we stand behind the ball, we might go external again. We're looking back down that fairway, scanning, but now we're narrowing in, and then we've got to go back inside. So as we step up to hit that shot, we have one last look up, or two looks, whatever it takes, we're now going inside. Now we're inside, because we're looking at a golf ball. But most people will tell you they don't even see the golf ball. Most elite golfers, the ball's there, but it's kind of a fuzzy awareness. How many of you here kind of know there's a ball there, but it's not really important in the equation? Put your hand up if you understand what I mean by that. So we're at four now. We're standing here. We're going to hit our shot. We're so inside our mind with the swing and, how we want, and the shot we want to hit, the ball really isn't kind of there. Who finds that? See, when I do it, I can hardly think of a ball. I really lose the perspective on ball because my brain is going, in, I'm inside, I'm not outside anymore. So when I play that shot, what would I be thinking about here, do you think? I'm looking over the ball here. What's going on in my mind? What should I be ideally focusing on if I'm here? Visualizing your target. Right, I mean, I, I don't have this anymore, right? Because I've looked, I get a last check, I'm back inside, so here, I've got to be for me, I've got to have the right amount of elements in my focus going. So for me, what I see personally, I see a ball flight and the ball landing and bouncing. That's how I see it. Now you guys might see it differently and that's okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, also mine's colour, some of you might have black and white. Mine's quite clear but it's quite small, the picture that I see. So I don't see a big panoramic type of perspective that some people might. I see quite a small window that's colour with a golf ball flying through and bouncing into my area when I'm focusing well. Now think about this for a moment. If I was doing this, focusing like that, now I'm at the pointy end of the arrow. I'm in that altered state. Some call it the ideal performance state. Some call it the zone. You've heard those expressions used. You get into this state where nothing is going to affect you outside of this. It's like a little cocoon or a bubble that you're in. Put your hand up if you've had that experience before in your life. You know what the zone feels like. Well, wouldn't you like to get into that more often? So let's look at this for yourselves now. What I'd like you to do, just for a moment, I want you to look down on this page and I want you to look at those four areas and I want you to take a moment to just think about the way you go about it. Now I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. And you can tell me what you do to get into that state. So I want you to tell me about what the scan means for you. I want you to tell me what select means for you, how you go about doing that. I want you to tell me how you simulate in your mind the shot that you're going to hit, how you experience that in your mind, and then four, how well you can execute the shot which we call swing, but it's an execution of the shot, how well you do that. So just take a couple of minutes to think about it. And you've got some lines up the top. Write it out as you know it. And we'll come back.